Hi guys, how are you doing? My name is Richard and I suffer from mental health issues. There's your introduction. If you're new to my channel or you haven't seen any of my other videos, I normally video indoor cycling classes and I've also got a weekly vlog that I do. So this is a complete diversion to what I normally do. Why am I doing these videos? Well, in 2005, I was officially diagnosed with manic depression, depression and anxiety. And I've been treated for both those ever since. Part of my treatment is I've had various counseling sessions and I'm currently going through another bout of counseling. I mentioned to my counselor that I was starting a YouTube channel and what that was gonna involve. And she said, it might be an idea that whenever I'm feeling particularly low or if I'm feeling angry about something, to get it on video for me to watch back and to see how that makes me feel. I can tell you after doing a few of them, the, the ranty angry videos I watch and they're not a problem. The more reflective emotional videos I really struggle to watch. But what it has done is it's opened my eyes to various things that happened to me prior to my diagnosis in 2005 that confirms that I was definitely suffering from mental illness for a lot longer than I thought I had, going back to my childhood. So, Doing those videos for myself kind of led me to think, well, if I can see things because I've recorded them that I've never thought about before, maybe I could do a series of videos that maybe could help either someone suffering from mental health issues or someone that is living with someone or knows someone with mental health issues or suspect someone has got mental health issues. Maybe it will highlight certain triggers, behaviors that can help understand what mental health and the problems that it causes. They're not self-help videos by any stretch of the imagination and they're certainly not tutorials. I'm still suffering. I'm nowhere near fixed and I'm nowhere near the end of my journey and dealing with my mental health issues. So I'm certainly not in a place to preach. But as I say, what I will be doing is just talking through my journey and how my mental health issues have affected my life, those around me, and the decisions and career paths that I've taken over the last few years. We're gonna talk about various subjects throughout the videos. So each video will be highlighting certain aspects of my life and we'll be gonna talk through those. As I say, with mental health, your views and opinions can change depending on what mood you're in and how you're feeling on any given day. So, some of the videos may be controversial. Some things I say you may agree with. Some things you may strongly disagree with. And some things might have you shouting at the screen. But that's part and parcel of discussing mental health. So how does my mental health issues affect me on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, let's take you back. Believe it or not, I'm an incredibly shy person. Now I know that's hard to believe because I'm sitting here talking to you down the lens of a camera. And for those of you who know me personally, it might come as a bit of a surprise. But the truth of the matter is, I am an incredibly shy person, which has, I think, given rise to my anxiety issues. Over the years, I've developed a pers persona a different person to the real me. And 
it's almost like an opposite of a shy person. At times I'm very loud. Most of the time I'm very loud. I'm outlandish, boisterous, and complete opposite to a shy person. But that persona has developed over the years. However, being that person is still incredibly tiring. Mentally, it's a struggle. So what tends to happen is I am this different person when I'm with friends or out socializing or at work. Um, and when I come home to my safe place, i.e. my house, I relax and become the opposite. I don't talk a lot. I don't interact a lot. And yeah, I'm very quiet, generally. So why is anxiety the, the big trigger for me? Well, I'm a nervous person. I like things to be planned. I like routine and I'm very comfortable being on my own. I've also got a very black and white view of the world. Things are either right or wrong. There's no middle ground. Yes, no, whatever. Which can cause problems, especially with the boisterous me. Even things like ordering a takeaway, for example. Just phoning someone and placing an order I find stressful. Which is why we do it on an app or I get my wife to do it generally. Going to a bar and standing at the bar to order a drink with a crowded bar stresses me out. So these little things cause me problems. Journeys. If I don't know somewhere or I haven't been to somewhere before, I meticulously plan what's gonna happen. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it makes me anxious if I go somewhere new or if I know I'm meeting new people, it makes me anxious. But talking to you, some of you strangers, down the lens of a camera, not a problem. Because I'm performing. And it's easy to do. I find it easier talking to strangers about my feelings and my condition than I do my own wife. Which is really hard. And it's something that has affected me most of my life that throughout the various therapists that I've spoken to doctors I've spoken to I can open up I can be honest and I'm not afraid to cry or whatever the case may be and yet to those closest to me around me it's the old stiff upper lip don't talk just shut down and that's hard and it's something that I need to work on and have been working on. That I feel once I unlock that and I can talk to my wife openly and honestly, that will be a huge shift in my recovery. Let's not forget, mental health isn't something that you're gonna cure. Mental health is something you learn to live with and it doesn't define you as a person or define your decision making. You just learn to cope with it. And I'm still very much on the lower part of that journey, learning how to cope with it. Even after all these years and all the medication and all the therapy, I'm still only scratching the surface. 
So how does it affect me on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, as I say, the anxiety, how does anxiety feel to me? Well, anxiety is probably the biggest influence on my life and it leads on to everything else. It's almost like a fizzing in my body, uncontrollable. Like I'm on, my nerves are on edge. Every part of my body is on edge. I get heavy chest, I get a lump in my throat, and I become hypersensitive to noise, surroundings, whatever, whatever, whatever I'm feeling at that moment in time. So what do I mean by hypersensitivity? Well, if I'm in a work environment, for example, and two or three people are talking and I'm stressing, their, their voices fill my head like it, it feels like it's going to explode and there's no space for anything else and it, and it just feels really loud. Or if people are too close to me or if I've got a crowd around me, I become almost claustrophobic. And that then causes me just to either want to walk away or just to shut down and try and block everything out. And that's how my anxiety works. In terms of the depression, that goes in peaks and troughs. And depending on what stage I'm at, is to how close those peaks and troughs are. I describe my depression like an empty glass. So I have an empty glass and it's filling with water. And when the glass is full, I have to release it. And the way I release it is by having a breakdown, crying, whatever. Depending on where I am is how quickly that glass is being filled. So right now, I'm in a relatively level place. So it's just dripping at the moment into my glass. So it's filling really slowly. When I'm at a low point, the water's gushing in and I have to release, which means I have multiple breakdowns throughout the day or, or whatever, depending on how quickly the water's coming in. And that's how I describe my depression. What does it mean when I'm at my lows? Well, it can be deb debilitating. You have no enthusiasm, lack of motivation. You don't want to talk or interact with anybody. You're tired all the time. And I mean proper tired, not just, oh, I'm tired today, proper knackered and it's an effort to do anything and then the problem is with that you feel guilty because you feel guilty for not interacting for not doing your chores for not going out and doing something that you enjoy or shopping what whatever the 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 the, the, the that, it, that you needed to do on any given day you feel guilty because all you want to do is sit on the sofa, lie in bed, and let the world carry on around you. And once you're in that rut, it's incredibly hard to get out of it. So that's how my depression feels. And I've been going through these peaks and troughs, as I said, since 2005. In 2005, I had a very stressful job. It was a job I absolutely loved but it was incredibly stressful and I've been doing it for a number of years and it resulted in me having a complete and utter breakdown I just had a meltdown emotionally physically I just shut down completely I was in a very dark place where I didn't want to be here and it got to the point where I knew exactly where I was going to go exactly what I was going to do and exactly how I was going to be found And that was really, really, really hard. I was just like a child. I was like a vegetable. I, I didn't want to get out of bed. I couldn't cope with anything. I couldn't make any decisions. I couldn't interact. I just physically was this shell, like a newborn baby. And that was really hard on my family and particularly my wife. Because unlike other illnesses, 
unless you research mental health, there's no awareness of it. There's, there's no manual for it. If you're suffering from a disease, like cancer, for example, you get diagnosed, everyone knows what cancer is. Irrelevant of what type of cancer it is, everyone knows what it is. And everyone knows deep down that there's two options. You get treated, you get better, you get the all clear. You get treated, it doesn't improve, you die. Black and white. But there's a lot of support, particularly for cancer, quite rightly. Um, whereas with mental health, as I say, like a newborn baby, there's no manual. Because everyone suffers differently, everyone feels differently, and everyone's got their own way of coping with it or not. So, very similar to dementia, if you're living with someone with mental health issues, it's probably harder on those people than the actual person that's dealing with it themselves because they know what's going on in their head. Even though they can't do anything about it, they know what they're thinking, they know what's happening. But from the outside, you feel helpless, I'm sure. And that's really hard for everybody concerned. So I had this breakdown and I was diagnosed and I was put on a course of medication. The other thing with mental health medication, for those of you who, who aren't aware of it, is it's not an instant fix. It takes time to get into your system. It takes time to have any effect whatsoever. And you have to be on the right medication for you and the right dosage level as well. And that takes time to find that combination. I've been on various different types of medication, various levels of dose, and some have worked, some haven't, some have had side effects that I couldn't live with. So it takes time. And when you're in a depressive state, that's really hard because you think, if I've got a headache, I take a aspirin or I take a paracetamol or ibuprofen or whatever. And within a couple of hours, generally my headache's gone. Mental health doesn't work like that. And nor does the medication. It takes weeks and months for it to show any sign. And if it doesn't work, you have to start the process all over again. And it's different for everybody. So that's hard. Counseling. It works for some people, it doesn't work for other people. I've, as I said earlier, I've had many different counseling sessions. I've had different counselors, some I've got on with, some I haven't got on with. Um, they work to a degree, but once the counseling stops and you're left on your own, you get that wave to start with, and then you slowly disappear. And life events can really affect a depressive person. You're, you're always on the edge. You, you're never completely up here, and you know that down here is, is somewhere you can get to very, very quickly. So you're living on that edge. And I think for me personally, unlocking that door to be able to speak to my wife openly and honestly will be a massive game changer for me. Because as I've already said, speaking to a stranger about how I'm feeling, I find very, very easy. And yeah, I can't speak to my wife. We'll see how that goes. So that is a little bit of background about my mental health issues. What this series is going to be about, as I said, it's not self-help, it's not a tutorial, it's just my journey, which will hopefully help you possibly in some way or trigger something in your own mind or help you understand what it's like to be mental. So I think that's a good place to stop for today. 
if you've got any questions or you need any advice, I'm happy to offer what I can offer. So please feel free to comment below. Let me know what you think. And if you like what you see today and you think you want to watch more, then please think about subscribing so you get to see every every episode. I haven't got a plan for when I'm releasing these videos. Um, it's not going to be a formal, I'm going to release on this day every week or every two weeks. It's just as and when I feel ready to, to release each episode. So, thanks for watching. Well done for making it this far if you have. Look after yourselves. And I'll see you soon. Cheers, guys.